Yes, make sure you check out my podcast, Doggy Diamonds No Filter, on Apple Podcasts and, ironically, Spotify. The links are right below in the description box. Just make sure you go there and check them out. Also, for only $100, I'll promote whatever you need on my social medias and my website. That's my Twitter, Facebook, Insta Stories, YouTube community, and my website, www.doggydiamondstv.com. Hit me up on Instagram at Doggy Diamonds for your promo. Serious inquiries only. Must be cash app ready. And if you're not getting the notifications and you've been looking for the notifications or sometimes the videos is lost, but you know they're out there, make sure you go to www.doggydiamonds. No, <laughs> I'm reading one thing and thinking about nothing. www.theinterviewking.com and sign up for the email list to get the new content. Let's go. I need a nap, so I'm just going to come here, um, talk really quick, and then I'm gone. Take me a little nap, and I'll be back later on. Um, yeah, just stop the music. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's stop the music. So just to show you how much I look like my um, avatar over there, not the one up here, the one over there. I just decided not to put a hat on, and this is funny how I made it. So, um, yes, how's everybody doing this evening? Um, hopefully everybody's doing well. I just came on here really quick to explain the situation that was brought to my attention. Shout out to AJ of the Connected Experience Podcast. AJ of the Connected Experience Podcast. That's a pod podcast on my network. And you can actually go check the Connected Experience because it's a good podcast. So he brought to my attention. He's like, yo, Max B has a new documentary out. I was like, oh, that's dope. He said, yeah, but they use your voice. I was like, whoa. I didn't know, I didn't know that. He said, yeah, they use your voice. And, um, you know, I don't know how they were able to do that. So he said, did you speak to anybody? And I was like, no, because they, when I was doing the show last night, they were calling me 911, my partner, Big Steel as well. And I was like, no, I didn't know anything about that. I was never connected with anybody. I was never contacted. I was never emailed, never anything. And they used my voice for the Max B um, documentary they did. I think it's in part two. So this isn't against Max B, it's more against Spotify and Gimlet Media. Um, the issue that I have is that that interview was hard as hell to obtain. I went through hell. That's one of my most popular interviews that was pre-YouTube. That was the DVD days. And that interview was hard as hell to obtain based off the politics of the interview, um, what was surrounding the interview, and... You know, uh, uh, it was a lot with that interview, which I've explained a few times, but I'll just give you a quick backstory. At this particular time, I can say Max B, Max B was um, blackball. Nobody wanted to deal with Max B based off of the situation that he had going on with Jim Jones. He disrespected Jim Jones, so people like Flex wasn't playing him. Um, rest in peace, K. Slay wasn't paying, paying, playing him. A lot of people wasn't playing uh, Max B. He wasn't getting any press. The only person that took a chance and gambled with him was Fendi and then DVDs after that. But Fendi did and nobody would actually give him press. He wasn't on nothing. So we gambled. We took a chance and I did the, the interview, which ended up being a, um, a, a, a cult classic when it comes to interviews. The problem is this. Now everybody's on the wave. Now everybody's riding the wave. And that's fine because I, I think he deserved it. I, I thought he deserved it then. And I'm happy that people are into Max B or what's going to happen with him when he come home. And he get his just due. I'm happy for that because he paid his debt to society and he deserved. The issue that I have with it is that when you have content creators like myself who constantly battle ridicule that I only interview has-beens, I interview nobodies, all of this, all this. The past few months, all I've been seeing is my foot is repurposed places. So if you look at whatever happened to Camp Low, I'm in that. You look at whatever happened to Cassandra Lucas, I'm in that. If you look at Big Pun versus Jay-Z, I'm in that. You look at some guy who's doing reactions. He has a whole channel dedicated to like my Ali Vegas um, interview of, you know, the cults and ritual stuff that go on. He has a whole channel. So he used a lot of my interviews. So the funny thing is that as you fight these stigmas and these things put on you, look at how much of the culture you do impact. So if you don't pay attention to what you impact, the naysayers and the, and the people who dislike you will make you think that you didn't do anything, 
right? But if, but as I'm seeing, I'm all over the internet and other people's work, right? I don't have an I don't have a uh, 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 I don't want to sue Spotify. I don't want any money from them. What I did want was my credit, and y'all got to talk to me because I don't know legally what ground I got to stand on, but I do know that <laughs> I'm lawyered up. Shout out to, believe it or not, WAC 100 was like, yo, I got a lawyer for you. Um, but we work hard for our content, and you can't use my voice without telling me you're going to use my voice or even crediting me for using my voice. How do you make a whole podcast about Max B and whenever you talk Max B and you go back to any footage of him, it's always going to come back to me. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing because we made history together. The bad thing is that he didn't get his just due in the industry. But don't try to give him his just due right now. And the issue that I have is that you got these big conglomerate companies like Spotify, who's giving out a bag here, giving out a bag there, giving out a bag to this person, and this person's getting that. But the real content creators like myself, they'll overlook. And I guess I'm not good enough for the bag, but I'm good enough for you to take my footage. So that's just my whole thing. I don't know what the proper protocol is. I know I did send an email. I was directed to another place. So I did that. Again, this is not a suing thing. I don't think I could be monetarily compensated. I don't, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for who told y'all y'all can do that? What made y'all do that? And what leg did y'all have to stand on to think that you can take my voice and put it in your project without even talking to me? You know, it, it's it's more of a yo. We doing these, Mac. We doing the Max B documentary. Can we use this? I probably would have said, yeah, fine. Just make sure I'm in the credit. But just to take it and don't even speak to me about it, that's kind of foul. So again, <laughs> being the first one to go through things. We'll see what's going to happen. We're going to see what's going to happen. Um, I'll keep you updated. Uh, what can happen? What's going to happen um, legally? What leg do I have to stand on? And I, I just have an issue with us being content creators. I went through hell to get that interview. And, um, you know, the, the, the flack was, you know, Mel Murder's my man. Is he going to have an issue with it? Um, Jim Jones, is he, you know what I'm saying? Is he going to be mad? So I went through a lot to get that interview and end up getting it and it ended up being a cult classic, like I said. But for somebody just to take, even if it's five seconds, that's five seconds too much because you didn't ask me. Maybe I didn't want to be a part of that. Maybe I didn't want to be affiliated with the situation anymore. So just for you to just take from me and y'all got billions, millions of dollars and don't say, hey, what do you want? Because I'm public, right? You publicly took it. My name is on it. That's my voice. Everybody knows me. And then even if you look at my Drink Champs interview, the title of my Drink Champs interview, ironically that I post the video yesterday and post the picture yesterday, the title of the Drink Champs interview is Doggy Diamond Speaks on his Max B interview. So it's just strange how this culture works or how this culture shuns people, how this culture doesn't care about anybody. Then once that wave kicking, now everybody cares and everybody wants to be up on it. And I just think that that's very, you know, like I said, I'm happy that he's getting his just due. I don't know if he's financially tied to it anyway. Hopefully he is. Hopefully he can get a couple of dollars from it. I'm not trying to infringe on that. I'm not trying to stop his bag. I'm not trying to stop nobody's bag. But when it comes to me, you're going to handle me correctly because I'm the, one of the only ones who came into this culture and did it the right way. I never did it for money. I never been, uh, uh, I never got the huge bag. I never got anything that I didn't deserve. I've just straight up came in here and documented the culture from beginning to the end, from the littlest people to the Dave Easts, to the Fetty Wops, to the Gucci Mans, to the Futures, to the Prodigal Sons. And I get a lot of flack for showing love to the culture because then you got the naysayers and then you got uh, 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 individuals who want to knock you for showing love. People knock me for doing a hundred dollar promotion. And it's not, I do it because I need the money. I do it because a lot of people don't have the money, but they need the promotion, but I have the platform. So shout out to Mount that as word as well. Make sure you go inside of um the YouTube community. Cause um, I promote a lot of them. So that was just really it. Uh, I sent the email 
And we, I'm just waiting for a, a response from the email. A guy by the name of Jinx hosted it. So he directed me to somebody at Spotify. And it's Friday, so we'll see what happens. Maybe I won't get an answer Friday. I'll wait up to Tuesday. And Tuesday, if I don't get a reply, I'm going to speak to a lawyer and see what, you know, what grounds I have. Not because I need anything from it, but we need to know as content as content creators what can they take from us what can they use because you got to remember it's big bank versus no bank i don't have the money or resources that spotify has i don't have the lawyers i don't have anything that they have so can they just take from content creators and repurpose it and it's okay and we don't you know so this is going to be um a learning experience for myself as well as others. And then we'll learn going forward how to protect ourselves. And again, I'm going to be the sacrificial lamb like I always am for this damn culture. But I'm okay with it because um, it's funny that uh, I, I did something so iconic and didn't know that it was going to be iconic when I did it. But I just did it because I loved the culture. And it just so happens that whenever you love something, you got to just love it. There is no conversation there is no you know uh retribution there is nothing for it like you get nothing you know um for what you love and i don't care if it's a person or whatever the case may be you get anything so um yeah it's 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 uh it's very very weird so um like i said i did email spotify i'm not too sure what gimlet media is but um i don't know who i gotta talk to so if i don't get a response by Tuesday, then I know that I got to speak to a lawyer and see what grounds I have to stand on because you're not using my voice and um, it's leaving me out in the cold, you know? And, and again, I don't, it's not a money thing for me because I'm, for all intents and purposes, I'm not broke. Um, this is not a money thing, but if it's capitals to be made and there's monies to be made and people are getting, um, paid like why shouldn't I you you don't care if you use one second of my voice I don't care you I didn't say you can use it at all you know so one thing I've always been cautious of in this digital space is somebody slutting me out or just misusing me now from the Max B interview Dave East used audio from it a lot of them have used audio from it and a lot of people um have told me yo i did this and i did that and i'd be like word that's dope that's what's up but damn imagine somebody using your voice that has a blank check of resources and they don't help you with any resources they don't say hey we like the interview we like what you're doing we see you've been a staple in a culture. Hey, come over here and then you don't get none of that. It's just like, yeah, we'll just use his shit and he ain't shit anyway. But then somebody else will come out, Joe Schmo, under what I blueprint that I set forth and they'll get rewarded and it'll be like, oh, they got a great podcast. You know, that's that's what I'm that's what I'm really fighting for, for the ones that have put in the work and get overlooked, but they still need you. Right. They still need you for the content, but they don't need you. So this is what um, that's what they've been doing um, for a long time. They don't need you. They just need what you could create and what you created. So, you know, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little it's, it's a little crazy, you know, so that, that's just really, that's what I wanted to come on and say to y'all, let y'all know what was going on because, um, I just want to know, I just, this just happened last night while I was live with y'all last night. I got the phone calls at 911, 911. And, um, you know, like I said, the most that can come from this is that I can learn something and be able to teach y'all that, well, if somebody used this amount, because if somebody samples somebody, I can't say, well, I only sample five seconds. No, I still got to pay for the sample. If I use somebody's voice in a record, I can't say, I only use a little bit of your voice. You can't use anything because it's not yours. You know, it's not yours. And this is just where we at, where people with these big companies can just take anything from you. 
and um they think it's nothing you can do and 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 again the issue is when you when you go back to anything max b it's always going to go to this interview so there is no way that you can ignore it shout out to i am pretty black cutie pie for becoming a supporter there's no way that you can ignore it so when you say you're going to do a Max B documentary, you know you're going to use something in that. You Like, how can you avoid it? There's no way you can avoid it. She loved me. She loved me not. All of that is in this interview. All that is in this interview. The in-depth questions, the answers to stuff that y'all wanted to know was in this interview. So if you're going to do a documentary on him, and I like, you know, um, podcast um documentary i like podcast documentaries i like it but come on man like go to the source and this is what i don't like about the culture where it's become uh when it comes to journalism because like i said this is not journalism anymore it's just more of social media creating content it's no journalistic skill in it anymore and it's no more journalistic uh uh, uh criteria anymore because if you did an interview me and Gully TV was not seeing eye to eye, but he did an interview with Mike DeLorean, and then I did an interview with Mike DeLorean, and the first thing I said to him was, I saw you on Gully TV. And the only reason why I said that, even though I didn't particularly like Gully at the time, I would have been a sucker to act like I didn't see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it, it, my personal feelings has nothing to do with the integrity of the field that I'm in. I got to keep my integrity in the field and I could say, fuck you later. But for that moment, I have to admit that I saw you there. And this is the source of that. That was the source of what we're doing. Now we don't do, they don't do that. They'll re-interview people. They'll do shit and act like, you know, and then it's okay because they might have a certain amount of subscribers or whatever and they be like man he only got 200,000 subscribers you know I'll take his shit they don't even matter I got 5 million I got 400,000 you know and even people who I know I, some people that I know is I've seen them cover my content but didn't quote me I've seen you know because let's just be honest like some of these narratives that have been put out in hip hop, I've been putting them out for 17 years. Like a lot of this shit is not new. Like I've really interviewed everybody. I like the fact that history has to be renewed. I like the fact that you got a new generation. So we got to talk about certain things in the culture. I don't have an issue with that. But damn, quote the source. Quote where you got it from. Because remember, a lot of people who do interviews now. I was interviewing them and they were once a spectator. So they saw, they saw what I did with other people. Just like when Nori had Dame Grease on Drink Champs, if you watch the Max B interview, Dame Grease was in the interview. So he had to say, yo, you was in the, the he had to say that because how can you say Max B and you say Dame Grease but not go to that interview. It just is what it is, you know? So that's just, you know, just me just documented, documenting something that I love. Again, um, <laughs> I didn't get um, this big payout. It's, it's never been about that for me. I'm good, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna get what I gotta get, how I gotta get it. I'm gonna not hustle this shit. I'm gonna work it the way it needs to be worked. But we definitely have to protect our content creators. We have to protect the people who put in that work when it counted. Because remember, this is not what I did with him. It's not a virtual interview. It's not a stream yard. It's not a Zoom. It's an actual get in the car. It's a gas. It's a go to a block in Harlem. It's a camera. It's a tape. It's a dump the tape in the computer edit the footage, color the footage, put titles and fonts on the footage, 
render the footage, and then anybody who's a, a content creator know what rendering is, render the footage, and then purpose it to the world, then put it on DVD. So, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a little different. So we have to protect ourselves. We have to protect our stuff. And um, that's just really it. So, um, yeah. And, and again, with, you know, I always tell a story of just going out there and um, I didn't have his number. Fendi had his number. And I remember calling Fendi like, yo, where's he at? He's not out here. And <laughs> I went to the building where he lived. And then I turned around and it's like a little hill. So I couldn't see. And you know, he's short. But as I look over, I see somebody coming down the hill with their hair blowing in the wind looking like priest from Superfly. And I'm like, nah, this ain't him. Cause remember he always had the braids. So I'm like, nah, this ain't him. This is, this is, this is not, this is not him walking down a block with his hair blowing in the wind. So it was so much history with that, that I, that I got with me forever that I'm a part of. And you don't let somebody take a part of your history and a part of your experience and don't include you in it. But I remember his hair was blowing. I was like, nah, like, th is this real? Like, yo, is this, is this, is this, because I turn, turn around, you know, I used to wear the shades, but I turned around, his hair was blowing. I'm like, nah, this is, just, but, but again, you know, from that moment of me turning around, looking at him, I said, yo, this is about to be something special. Like I didn't, I'm telling you, if you're a content creator and you create content and you with said artists, there was no staging stuff like it is now. There was no moments of you're going to say this or say this. So it was so raw and uncut, spot on that in the moment you like, you got a moment, you know, you got a moment. It's like when I did the Ali Vegas interview. I was like, yo, this shit is special. This is, this is that one. This is it. And I felt it with, with, with Max. I, I never felt that special moment at any time. And when I turned around and seen him walking down the block, I was like, yo, get that, film him. Film him now because... You know, um, we, we just know it's, it's going to be big. So I didn't come here to keep y'all long, um, but I did, you know, wanted to explain the situation. I'm not mad. I'm not angry at anybody. I just want clarity. I just want to know legally what legs do we have to stand on as content creators? Because if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. If, it, if, if this is where the culture is at, then we need to find a way that we can be protected to where big corporations can't just take our stuff. Because if I take something from NBC and say, I only took 10 seconds, I only took five seconds, cease and desist, pulling me off the shelf, all of that. So why don't we have the same protection? That's really what it is. So this is more of a, um, an inquiry and a learning experience. Again, this is not for any money. I don't know if I'm entitled to any money. I don't know how this work. I really don't know. So this is a, def a a good part for me to learn this far being in the culture and for the culture, because then I could come back and say, well, according to the law, they're allowed to such and such. According to this, they could such and such. According to this, this, that, and the third, or they can't do this, that, and the third. So I'll be able to come back and report to you what's going on. Um, I'm just a transparent person. That's why I spoke about it. You can see I'm not angry or not mad. And if it's, and if Max B is getting money from this, I definitely don't want to affect his money um, in no way. You know, um, I'd rather take nothing and let Max get his life back on track. You know, um, I'm definitely not, I don't want to take anything from him, but Spotify and Gimlet, we got to talk. We got to talk. I need clarity and I need to learn. So that's what I'm doing this for. So, uh, yeah, with that, I'm Doggy Diamonds. I got to take a nap, man. I went to the gym today. Um, <laughs> I went to the to the mall to get some mincing. Shout out to the homie that I saw in the mall. Um, I don't know if it's copyright infringement. I don't know. I'm Like I said, I'm just learning 
but we're going to I'm going to learn. And again, legally, we have to learn when we create content. If we put it on YouTube, is it now property of YouTube? Where's fair use from the like I don't I really don't know. I have no idea. So I'm gonna learn. You're gonna learn, Trey. So <laughs> that's really what it's all about. I'm really doing this to learn what's going on and figure out what's going on and be able to tell um people that's you know aspiring to do this as well. Well, this is what happens. This is one of gonna happen. This is how this go. This is gonna happen. So with that, yeah, man, I'm Doggy Diamonds. Until next time, man. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all night. I might come back um later on. I don't know, but after this nap, I need this nap. And um, yeah, I'll holler at y'all later on. Peace. Tip -tip. Tip -tip. Tip -tip.